Hey everybody and welcome to what is probably a fairly anticipated Let's Look At. This is my Let's Look At of Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition. So for those of you who are maybe not familiar, who have joined my channel fairly recently, uh, actually Let's Play Dark Souls in the Xbox 360, it's pretty much inarguably one of my favorite games of all time. And now the long anticipated PC version is finally here, so I figured, you know, I would take a look at it. I was lucky enough to get a copy of this game from Namco Bandai. Let me just get my mouse out of the side of the screen here. Now, we're going to talk about a lot of stuff in this video. We're going to talk about some good stuff, or we're going to talk about some bad stuff. Let's start with the bad stuff. Uh, I am playing this with my uh, wired Xbox 360 controller plugged into the PC. I should point out, I'm fairly early on in the game still. Uh, I'm, I just defeated the Bell Gargoyle, so I'm about an hour in. At least an hour in for somebody who's played the game before. And I'm just heading down to uh, Andre of Astora's bonfire here so I can upgrade my weapons a little bit. But in any case, uh, I'm playing this with my wired Xbox 360 controller because I've heard that the PC controls are just absolute garbage. And actually, when you load into the game, it gives you like a, an indication of what the PC controls are like. So it's like WASD to move around, which is totally fine. You can use either the mouse or IJKL in order to control the camera, and the combat buttons were like, use control as like an attack modifier, and then uh, some other keys on the keyboard to do attacks. It just didn't appeal to me, so I figured I would rather use my Xbox 360 controller. And the other bad thing is, uh, I'm not running this with default graphical settings. I'm sure many of you have heard, there is a, a 1080p fix for Dark Souls PC, because it comes out or the, the version that came default, anyway, uh, only goes up as far as, I think, 1024 by 720, which may or may not have been the, the resolution that the 360 version ran in. But anyway, when you're up close to your monitor as opposed to far away on your TV, uh, it kind of looked like garbage. Like, it was all letterboxed and there was, uh, like, black bars at the bottom. It looked really, really just blurry is a good way to put it. But the uh, 1080p fix is, is awesome to download. Uh, super quick, super easy, and, you know, big thanks up to, I think this guy's name was uh, Durance, or Durance or something. Uh, came up with a fix that allows you to run this in pretty much any resolution you want. So I'm running this in, in 1080p right now, and it looks absolutely fantastic, actually. So, I'm just resting in this bonfire. Uh, so that's the bad news. The bad news is if you don't have a controller, I think if you want to play this game, you should probably get one. Because, you know, I, I haven't actually experienced it firsthand, but I've heard that the PC controls are absolute shit, basically. Uh, and the other bad news is it doesn't run great graphically out of the box, but you can fix that quite easily. The good news is that this is still Dark Souls, and this is probably the definitive version of Dark Souls, simply because of the fact that <clears throat> it actually, like, it has that extra DLC as well, which I haven't seen yet, but it looks much better than the Xbox 360 version. So this is the first time that I've actually been to Andre of Astora here. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm not too worried about like absolutely um, like min-maxing my build right now, so I'm just gonna get a little bit of extra damage on my broadsword, because I've just been using my default equipment, starting as the knight class here, and I might be able to purchase some more titanite shards. Yeah, let's purchase like five, eh, hey, let's just, we can go pretty high here, but we want to save some money to actually get the reinforcements done. Let's come down here, and we should be able to get fairly decent damage out of this now. Okay, that's fine. Maybe we'll pick up one more, and this will get us to plus five, I think. So for just one more, and we have barely enough to continue, but it should be okay. So that gets us to plus five, which is as far as we can go right now, uh, which is nice. We could repair our equipment as well, but we only have 55 souls. But anyway, if you are not familiar with Dark Souls, let's go over the, the basic rundown here. Uh, we are playing as this character right here, and we are, you know, just a small town girl living in a lonely world. Uh, trying to kind of complete this nebulous quest to restore the Age of Fire or end the Age of Fire. And it's kind of difficult to explain what's going on there uh, without getting into some serious, like, late game spoilers. But basically, this is like an action RPG where you are going around killing gods and monsters and stuff like that. And this is a game that got a lot of press and a lot of notoriety when it came out first on account of the fact that it is pretty much one of the most difficult games that most people have ever played in their entire lives. And I'd agree with that, at least on a first time run. Uh, Dark Souls is exceptionally difficult, and you are going to die constantly. Now, that is much better damage than we were doing before. However, I actually, I, I've come to the conclusion, at least my personal opinion, uh, that Dark Souls is actually not all that difficult. It's just about pattern memorization. The difficult part is memorizing the patterns of these enemies, uh, and then actually, uh, you know, executing. And it, it's a game that requires a more deliberate style than a lot of action RPGs that you might be used to, which are just like, RB, 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 or like, mash X as fast as you can. Uh, in Dark Souls, you actually have to employ like a really methodical combat strategy. So we are going to take this elevator down to our next area. And basically where I'm at in the game, for those of you who are familiar with Dark Souls, I am going to be heading through Undeadburg to get to Lower Undeadburg, which should allow me 
uh, to access the next area of the game. I'm not sure how much I'm going to play here because I really don't want to fight Capra Demon on camera. It's one of those things where I'm like, God, I, I already beat Dark Souls on camera. Please just let me be free of this. But actually, uh, I was worried that I would be worse at Dark Souls uh, since it's been like six months since I actually played it. Uh, than I actually am, but I've, you know, here and through the Bell Gargoyles, have not died yet, come close a couple times, I was fighting the Gargoyles and Solaire for the first time, uh, that I've ever seen, actually died before the second Gargoyle showed up, which was incredibly disappointing, uh, and I had to fight both Gargoyles myself, but I managed to make it happen with the help of some gold pine resin, but in any case, basically, here's, I'm gonna almost skip to the end of the video with my commentary here at the start of the video, should you buy this game? If you don't have a controller and have no plans on getting a, a PC controller, probably not. Uh, I hate to say that because this is one of my favorite games of all time. However, uh, absolutely I feel like that is the way that this game was designed. That's the way this game is meant to be experienced. And if people are telling the truth when it comes to the cumbersomeness, or cumbersosity? <laughs> Cumberso Cucumbersosity, maybe. Um, the cumber... cumber... I don't know. The difficulty of the PC controls compared to the, the normal controls uh, as they were intended on the console, uh, then you're definitely better off not experiencing this game probably than experiencing them through the cl clunky PC controls, is my opinion anyway. Because you really need to have like precise movements in this game uh, and, and to really be able to like vary your attacks in a number of different ways uh, in order to proceed the way that you need to proceed in order to succeed in Dark Souls basically. Uh, but if you do have a PC controller and you don't own Dark Souls yet, absolutely pick this up. Do, do yourself a favor, don't play default resolution, download the 1080p fix or the graphical fix, I think it's called the res fix actually. Uh, and it, give it some time, because it's going to be a while before you really understand what's going on. The game doesn't really tutorialize all that much, but you are going to eventually experience one of the best gaming experiences this generation for sure. And I really can't stress enough that this version of the game looks absolutely beautiful. So I'm just going through on Deadburg here. This is like one of the earliest areas in the game. Again, in case you're unfamiliar with Dark Souls, I'll just explain a little bit of what's going on here. So at the very top left, that is my humanity. That is uh, a statistic which basically, if it's white, it means you're human, and that means you can summon players for co-op and also be invaded yourself. It also gives you other benefits, like I think it makes you a little bit stronger. Uh, and if it's not white, then what it means is uh, you're hollow, which means you're basically playing single player only. So right now, we could be invaded. Actually, we can't because we've beaten the boss in this area. Uh, but if I hadn't beaten the boss in this area, we could be invaded by hostile players from, you know, throughout the Dark Souls community, of which there are several, and I hear on the PC that hacking is actually somewhat rampant, or training is somewhat rampant anyway, uh, so that perhaps there's a little bit of unfair kind of invasion balance going on right now, which is to be expected, I think. I don't think it necessarily takes away. I mean, there's hackers on the Xbox as well, and I assume on the PS3, but I haven't actually played the PS3 version. Uh, and they don't, they, they show up now and then, and occasionally it's a pain in the ass, but it's not so, so bad. So, uh, as you can see here, I'm just going to step into this room while I do some attacks. Uh, there's a variety of attacks I can do. So I can do a light attack, or a standard attack like that. I can do a heavy attack. This is using right trigger as opposed to right bumper, which does more damage. It takes more stamina. That's my green bar down there at the bottom. I can also shield with left bumper. I can parry with left trigger. Uh, I can dual wield my weapon, or do two-hand my weapon, uh, with Y, and then this does extra damage. Oh, is someone coming down here? Kind of looks like someone's coming down here from that shadow. Uh, but yeah, if I two-hand my weapon, it does extra damage. Let's wait for this guy to shoot at us. Then I'll two-hand, and just take him out in one hit. Now, ever so often, we come across these bonfires here. Now, basically, bonfires act as sort of save points, but the game has an auto-save feature, so we don't have to worry about saving constantly. Basically, these, these uh, bonfires permanently heal us, and they also allow us to level up if we so wanted, but leveling up, you know, most people when they first get started playing Dark Souls think that leveling up is like standard RPG leveling up, where it's essential for your success. Not so in this case. Equipment is much more vital for your success in Dark Souls than, than leveling up is. So we're, and the other thing I guess that's important to note <clears throat> about bonfires is that every time you go to a bonfire, every enemy respawns. So, it kind of works in almost like a, a Mega Man style where you have to, uh, you know, be aware that if you, you, those enemies go off the screen and you go to a bonfire, uh, you are going to need to take them out in the near future. So this is where Dark Souls gets a little tricky. We've got uh, several enemies in here, all of which coming at us at the same time. And the thing about Dark Souls, oh man, there's a third guy coming in, I hate that, uh, is that one enemy can represent a threat to you. Several enemies represents a huge threat to you. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think I can actually get through here yet, even though I do have the master key. Some of my details of, of Dark Souls are still a little rusty, and I know there's a faster way to get to Lower Undeadburg, but this is a way for me to 
<clears throat> go through a somewhat easier area of the game and explain what the heck is going on. So we gotta deal with these jabronis right here. Uh, basically the reason Dark Souls is so hard, I mean, there's other things that can happen too. Uh, like for example, you can fall off ledges and stuff, but most of the time you die in Dark Souls, it's gonna be due to combat. And the reason that most people die in Dark Souls is because they're not used to the fact that any enemy represents a serious threat. It might look like I'm just tearing through the game right here. That's because, you know, I've put like 500 hours into this game probably. If you are brand new, you are probably gonna think that you can basically just one-shot these skeletons, because like, fuck you, they're skeletons, right? That's like the earliest enemy in any RPG. Uh, but no, these skeletons, if they hit me, I might let one hit me just so you can see, although it goes against everything I stand for in Dark Souls. Spear Dude, let's let Spear Dude hit me here. Come on, hit me, I want you to- there you go. So you can see it does like... Um, well, I mean, I'm a little bit le more leveled up than most people would be at this part of the game, I think. Uh, but it still took off like maybe 20% of my total health, so we'll use an Estus Flask here to heal up. As you can see, we have a limited number of healing items, and those, we can't just like buy more, those deplete as time goes on. Uh, and the only way to replenish them is to go to a bonfire. So, I am going to enter up into this area right up here. But basically what I'm trying to get at is in Dark Souls, you have to execute like a very methodical style of combat, because any one enemy could kill you easily if you make one or two mistakes. Basically, if you make one or two mistakes in quick succession, that's how you die in Dark Souls. And I'm not making very many mistakes because I know these patterns from these enemies, because I've fought them, you know, dozens of times. If not hundreds of times. Although I still am getting hit occasionally here. If I was a lower level uh, and hadn't put any points into, like, Vitality, or if I wasn't human right now, uh, I would definitely stand to probably take some damage here. Uh, but yes, if, if you don't know enemy patterns, then it's going to be difficult for you to probably uh, perform at this level. At least when you first get started, I promise you it will come without too much trouble. Again, I would like to point out how much better this looks than the Xbox 360 version. It's not the best looking PC game I've ever seen, uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but everything's so shiny and you can actually see like where we're gonna be soon. Like that's where we're gonna go, uh, over here on this bridge. And we're gonna try not to get killed by the bridge dragon, but sometimes that does indeed happen to us. So that was, that bridge area that we were just on is where we fought our first boss. But uh, that was over, you know, 45 minutes ago, so we're not gonna talk about that too much. This is where I wanna go now. So we're gonna use our basement key and enter Lower on Deadburg, which is almost always uh, where I get my first death of the game. If I don't die against the gargoyles or I don't die against that boar on the way into the undead parish, I almost always die on my way uh, to fight the Capra demon. So we're gonna enter here. This is basically like the third area you're gonna face in the game. By the way, if you see these things on the ground here, these are messages uh, from other players. Basically by using this like red sign soapstone, or orange, sorry, orange guidance soapstone. Red sign is for um, dueling. Uh, we can write messages on the ground, for example, like, be wary of, um, rear. <laughs> and then just put that down on the ground. And if people rate our messages up, like, I can go to this message and see shortcut. That's a very good message. We'll rate that with a plus, and then, if the jury's kind of still out on what positive ratings give you, but I think if your message gets rated positive, you get a, a soft humanity. So my number in the top left would go to three, or would go to four instead of three. So we're gonna open up this shortcut. This is where we were very recently. Uh, this is one of my least favorite shortcuts in the game because I almost always fall off this thing and die because this door opens out instead of in. But that's okay, we're just gonna methodically make our way down here again. Never wanna sprint too hard in Dark Souls just in case you fall to your death. So, as we go back to our Estus Flask here, uh, we are entering Lower on Deadburg. This means for us we're gonna encounter assassins, uh, oh god, zombie dogs that can poison us. Uh, so I'm gonna hopefully be able to kill them two hits each. I'm not sure if they- is it poison or bleeding? I never really- this is a rough confession here. Uh, but I never really learned uh, the status effects in Dark Souls. So I'm kind of unsure what that icon at the bottom means, if that's bleeding or poison. I think it's bleeding, actually. Uh, and we'll S this up a little bit here. So one thing you might have noticed is as I get hit, even with my shield up, that drains stamina. So the second element of this game that's important is not just health- oh wow, sorry about that dog. Uh, the second element of the game that's important is not just health management, but also stamina management is of the utmost importance. Because you need stamina not only to, um, attack, but also to block as well. And if you can't block, obviously you're going to take a ton of damage. So these guys are telling me be wary of lying in ambush. That is a good tip. But there's a guy we can rescue, I think, back here first. If I walk by these buildings. Maybe it's not in this area. Maybe it's slightly later. I can't remember. But we also have to deal with these torch-wielding assholes who will light us on fire. And that's another thing with Dark Souls, is that there's different damage types, as you might expect. So these fire douchebags, if they hit us with their fire, even if I completely block their attack, it's gonna do damage to me. Oh, I didn't even know that dude could- oh, I thought he threw a torch at me, okay. Never mind, problem solved here. 
we'll just kill these guys. You know, some things that are hard to get used to here. The animations do look a little bit janky when you see, like, undead attacking all in the same way. I promise you it does not take away from what is otherwise a great game. Oh, man, I am taking way too much stupid damage here. But we will get twin humanities here. We can use those to make ourselves human if we so chose. I always thought that this was a secret right here, just because this door looks suspicious. But it, it, as far as I know, it's not actually. But I thought for sure that we rescued, like, Griggs of Vinheim in here somewhere. I do have the residence key. Somebody, oh, yeah, there he is. What's up, Griggs? Please, let me out of here. Somebody, anybody, help me. Unlock the door. Damn, I'm finished. I can hear you, man. How did this ever happen? I think I can go in here to get you? I have the residence key. Where do I enter the door? Oh, there we go. This is only the second time I've ever rescued him. I, I used to always skip by him. But ever since I wanted to make a sorcerer, this guy's, like, essential for that. Brilliant. You opened the door for me. Thank you. I'm safe. I thought I might never escape. I am Griggs of Vinheim, the sorcerer of the school. I am much obliged to your assistance. Thanks to you, I may now resume my travels. Alright, so we get the sorcerer set in here. So we might want to demonstrate that so we can change our armor a little bit. Uh, by the way, in Dark Souls, no pause button. So even, if, even when we pause, like we can still move around and other people can still attack us. So we can't just use that as like a get-out-of-jail-free card. So instead of our knight helm here, why not we put on our sorcerer stuff? Uh, this armor deals with defense, but also encumbrance. My guy looks kind of silly now, doesn't he? Um, so when we're wearing, like, lighter armor like this, if I go, uh, to change equipment, you can see, like, my equipment load is only 12 out of 61 there in the, like, the middle area. Uh, but if I put on the night stuff, I was closer to, I think I was roughly about half, because basically the way it works is when you're, like, 25% of your equipment load, you can run really fast, and you can do, like, a sweet roll like that. But as you get heavier and heavier... Uh, your roll becomes more and more slow, and you become less and less agile. But now I will take more damage when I get hit. Oh, hello. I'm fine. <coughs> I will rest a while, then return to Fire Lake Shrine. I have my sorcery. And I will be more cautious next time. Besides, I have an important task at hand. Alright, so he's going to talk about Big Hat Logan. I'm going to avoid that for now. You guys can discover that for yourselves if you're actually playing the game. Uh, but here's an idea. Instead of going back to Firelink Shrine, why don't you help me kill all these, like, assassin assholes who are just going to come out of the woodwork in a second here. Where did they come from? Oh, these doors back here, right. So now we're just going to run back, try to take these dudes out one by one. These guys shoot poison darts at us, which are a total pain in the ass. And I've actually kind of forgotten the pattern for these guys. I remember dying here uh, somewhat frequently. Oh, not good. Or maybe they just inflict bleed as well. So this is going okay so far, but not very well. I'm, I'm being too aggressive, you know? It's been too long since I played Dark Souls. When, you, when you're when you playing Dark Souls, you enter like a new state of mind. I'm, I'm almost bleeding to death here. Uh, oh, don't you dare, Estus, you motherfucker. Well, backstabs do a ton of damage, as you can see right there. So we're just going to try to kill this guy without getting hit ourselves. Backstab should be able to make it happen. Definitely a viable technique. And we will Estus up here. I'm guessing I'm going to play this until we get to uh, Capra Demon. And then we'll see. Uh, you know, maybe I'll fight him once. That'll probably be my first death. Because that dude is just a total dick. Usually there's items in here. Uh, I know that there's assholes out here. By the way, those bloodstains on the ground. Is that a bloodstain? No, that's just a shrub. But bloodstains on the ground, uh, when you see them and you're playing online, will often represent where other players have died. So we got another ambush here. This time including a dog. I would rather take out the dog first, because those guys are a pain in the ass. And also, what makes the Capra Demon such an unfun boss fight? For me, one of the worst boss fights in the game. Oh man, this is not good. Remind yourself that healing takes time, so I can't just bust that out whenever I feel like it. I could parry, and parrying allows you to repost, which does a ton of damage. Uh, but it's also incredibly risky in case you miss. No, not good, not good. May actually die here. But that might be okay, because then I can actually explain what goes on with the dying mechanic. I'm kind of tailoring this video for those of you who don't really know anything. This is not good. I'm trapped. Yeah, I'm going to die. <laughs> for those of you who don't really know anything about Dark Souls. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pop a humanity really quick. That should heal me back to full. It's a risky strategy, but uh, it's, it's one that might pay off here. You don't... Like, humanity is not necessarily unlimited unless you farm for it. Uh, so... You know, humanity is a precious resource, but I would rather use humanity than die right now, so. And I think it's a little bit faster than using Estus. L I just got lucky that these guys decided to back off. For some reason, I don't know, the dog has just got really skittish. 
One more hit should do that. Okay, so we did manage to make it through there, but it was it was risky. So every time we kill an enemy, we are getting uh, souls. Souls are used as both currency and kind of as experience points as we move forwards. Thought I heard something there. Uh, we're almost... Oh, I'm just on mucky ground, I guess. So we get a thief set of armor as well as the target shield, which I think is good for parrying, but it's it's been a while. So cut me some slack. Ah, I didn't either. thought there was another dog. It's getting startled like Resident Evil 2 here by these zombie dogs. Uh, now there should be... I think just back here, there's like a special item. Again, every time you play Dark Souls, everything is set. Enemy positions, item positions, so you just kind of like, after you play it, you know, four or five times, you get a feel for where everything is, and you can run through the game. Like, the first run through of Dark Souls, for most people, there might be another dog down here. Shortcut ahead. Very true. I should rate that up, but I'm not gonna, because I'm running too fast. Um, first time you play Dark Souls, for most people, takes between, like, 50 and 100 hours to complete the game. Second attempts, usually like 10 hours or less. And I think there's a dude on the left here I have to watch, watch out for it too. So I'm just trying to like aggro them and then get them to come one by one. Do a lot of kiting uh, and, and a lot of uh, just like strategic fighting. So the dual wielding didn't really help me out there. But anyway, we are going to unlock this shortcut. The way the Dark Souls uh, world is designed is really, really awesome. Oh, I forgot about this archer up here. Uh, but yes, yeah, so the way the Dark Souls world is designed is really, really awesome. So you saw it start at Firelink Shrine, which is kind of like the, the basic hub world of the game. There's a merchant here who I'm just going to ignore for now. Um, but yeah, so Firelink Shrine is like the hub world. From there, you saw us take the elevator up, and we got to that blacksmith area that was just under the Undead Parish. Uh, but also, this right here, this door that we're about to open from the right side, is going to open up another shortcut to Firelink Shrine. So what we can do now... By the way, as, as I just come up here for a second, this is on Deadburg where we came out of the tunnel, which eventually led leads to Firelink Shrine. So I, you might remember that if you were watching the very start of this video, or near the start of this video anyway. And then through here, I'm just going to ignore that rat probably, uh, we are going to enter that area where we climbed up right at the very beginning of this. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Cotton Eye Asshole. Uh, we can also do a plunging attack, which would be risky right now, so I'm not going to do it. But I'm killing these dudes in one shot, which is good. That's because, uh, entirely because I upgraded my weapon. But, like I said, equipment is, is m the most important... Actually, you know what's m the most important part of Dark Souls? Memorizing enemy patterns and, like, learning combat skills. Because after that... Are there two there? Or just a one dude with another dude attached to him? Um, because I was using my default equipment for, like, the first... You know, maybe 20% of the game. And that worked totally fine for me. But, obviously, upgrading your equipment helps you out a lot, too. So there's Griggs of Vinheim. What's up, Griggs? Let's demonstrate a little bit of what you can use your souls for. So I'm gonna rest here. Uh, and I'll level up as well. So leveling up works differently than in other RPGs. We have our currency and our leveling, like our experience points, are exactly the same thing. And that's just souls that you get from killing enemies, basically. So we can level up any of these stats. To tell you the truth, this is getting probably a little bit advanced for like a first look. But attunement is like not that important for a character that's going to be largely a melee class like me. Uh, what's the one that's like totally worthless? Resistance is a stat that you never ever want to put anything into. But otherwise, you basically want to focus on vitality, endurance, which raises your health and stamina uh, um, bah, 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 respectively. And then maybe you want to do uh, like a dexterity build, which will allow you to use like faster weapons, or a strength build, which will allow you to use heavier weapons, and maybe an intelligence faith build if you're going as a uh, pyromancer or a sorcerer. Because there is magic in this game, but we haven't seen any of it yet, and probably will not in this video. So I'm just going to raise my uh, vitality a little bit here, and then we will get ready to go. So we are human. I'm going to try to fight this boss that we're going to go up against. It's going to be a total pain in the ass. I'm not going to mince words. This is probably one of the most dickish bosses in the game. I'm hoping that maybe we'll get lucky and we uh, will not have to fight him alone. Maybe we'll get some summoning help. But the problem with this boss is that he has those poison dogs. God damn it. Uh, and they are always, always, always a pain in the ass. This fight is usually decided in like the first five seconds. I'm going to look at this bloodstain in a second too because I want to show you how the bloodstain works. Dark Souls is a very interesting kind of um, model for, for cooperation and, and you know, uh, combative multiplayer as well. As you will see as we move forwards, but first let's kill all these dudes. You just get used to this area. 
Now, I'm almost guaranteeing that they have just dropped like a hollow warrior waist cloth, which is terrible. Yeah, we don't really want that. How about this one? Firebomb. Okay, well, the, the firebomb might come in handy at some point. Uh, even against the, the Capra Demon who we're about to fight. So let's see how this poor soul here died. So he's going, he's like, ah, I'm gonna fight this guy, I'm gonna fight- Oh no, you know what he's trying to do? He's trying to get the Ring of Sacrifice, which is over there on the right side. Oh, just fell off the edge. How about this guy right here? I wanna touch the blood stain. So let's see. Looks like he drank some Estus or something. Running along. Oh, he's gonna make the jump again. No, he's not. <laughs> uh, the Ring of Sacrifice over there? It's not all that useful. Basically, it means when you... Well, normally when you die, you lose all of your souls and all of your soft humanity. So if I died right now, I would lose those four humanity in the top. Uh, but additionally, I would lose the, like, 759 souls I have. Which is not really that big of a deal, honestly. Because you can always go back. If you die and then you go back to your bloodstain without dying, you can replenish all that stuff. Like, you can recover all that. Although, if you were human, you will still be undead. So you lose one total humanity. Uh, that all being said... Ring of Sacrifice and all that useful. And if you die before you get back to your bloodstain, that stuff is gone forever, which can be a pain in the ass. Alright, so this is just a merchant here. We can see what we can buy from this lady. Uh, we might want, like, purple moss clumps or blood red moss clumps because these will prevent the, um, bleeding and poison. But instead, I'm going to buy some charcoal pine resin, which could be very useful uh, in this boss fight. I'm guessing that this video is going to end with me dying against the Capra Demon. I mean, it's a dude who I've fought, you know, I've beaten Dark Souls probably like five or six times. But, Capra Demon is always a pain in the ass, despite being a boss that you fight relatively early in the game. So we'll get this dude... Ah, uh, usually you can just sneak up on him and backstab him. It's not 100% reliable, but it works a lot of the time. Oh god, we got, a, we got an invader. I forget where people invade in, um... In this area. This is not good. <laughs> but maybe I'll get lucky. Should kill this dude first, and then maybe just wait down here. For the red spirit to come. I, I do not know where dark spirits in dark in, in uh, lower on Deadburg invade. So we should see a red phantom fairly soon. Uh, that will come for us. And hopefully it won't be a hacker. Uh, oh my god, he's got crystal weapons. And I think he just did like power within or something. This guy's gonna absolutely rape us. That, that was with my shield on. This guy's not necessarily a hacker though. Did I do very- I, I did 19 damage to him. That's not good. Uh, he might just have like a low- a low level build. We might stand a chance here, although it's kind of unlikely. He's just doing like way too much goddamn damage to us at every opportunity. Does he have no shield? I don't know, like I- I'm basically just fishing for backstabs here. I've got a lot of invasion history. I'm guessing that most of the people online in Dark Souls did not play the 360 version, so maybe they don't understand as much what's going on and they're easier bait, but I, I've gotten into some combat before in my time. Crystal weapons are extremely powerful, however, they do break. Oh, that hurts. That hurts a lot. <laughs> did he just eat a humanity? Oh, he's eating a green uh, blossom so that his stamina increases. I could still win this fight, amazingly enough. He's just bashing me with his shield. Next time I backstab him and knock him down, I'll probably try to heal. Please don't pop a humanity, you son of a bitch. This guy's... Oh, no. That's bad. <laughs> One more backstab and I'll be done. This guy is not a good fighter by any stretch of the imagination. He's just relying on items. And it's totally possible that I might act Oh, no, he actually managed to kill me there. I'm not sure how that happened. Anyway, this guy's got a kind of a twinking build. Like, all that crystal stuff is going to make him uh, probably a total pain in the ass to other people. Who, and again, I'm not saying I'm the best player in Dark Souls history or anything. But it's going to make him a pain in the ass to uh, other players who are just going through that area for the first time. But I maintain that I could have won that. I'm not really sure what happened, how he killed me in one hit. Maybe he parried me and managed to uh, do a riposte. And then one shot me. But in any case, that guy's kind of a twinking douchebag. Twink meaning that he is um, preying on newbies, basically. With a build that is uncharacteristically strong for that area of the game. Uh, but you know, that that's Dark Souls in a nutshell. I'm not going to say that I have never, you know, in my Dark Souls career, engaged in a little bit of, of unfair combat. 
But still, sometimes that can be frustrating. It's more frustrating if that would have been, like, my last humanity. It should be easy enough for me to just get back there and at least recover my souls. Uh, soul's not important so much, but recover my humanity, which is a little bit more important. But I won't be able to turn human for the boss fight, which sucks. And normally, on the Xbox 360 version of Dark Souls, this would be the point where uh, that dude would now send me hate mail, calling me, like, a, a fucking asshole... Way to go, pussy. You lost to Dark Souls. <laughs> Bet you feel like a big man. Um, but since this is... Oh, by the way, Games for Windows Live is built into this. Uh, but I have notifications off, I think. Maybe we're not getting any hate mail. Or maybe he's just a good guy who enjoys twinking in Lower Undead Burg. Who knows? That's the price you pay. Like that, That's the balance of Dark Souls. Is If you want to be human and potentially get help from other people, you also run the risk of getting invaded. Now that is my blood stain right there. By the way, most invasions are not going to be fair. Uh, so just kind of get used to that. Even if the dude is not hacking, uh, there's a pretty good chance that he's just gonna, ha like, build a player versus player character at a super low level that has great equipment and is, is able to tear your ass apart. Uh, I hate when enemies use Estus, but that's okay. So we're gonna at least give, uh, the, the Capra Demon a, a crack here. We're probably gonna lose. But it's not guaranteed. Now, there should be two dogs here that are gonna be total pains in the ass. There's one dead. Are you gonna attack? Oh my god, I waited for so long to see if you were gonna attack me. Okay, so they are dead. Uh, we're gonna try this. It's probably not gonna work out so hot, but what I'm gonna do here very quickly is just... Um, by the way, you can gesture, so when that dude entered, I could have been like, Hey, pleasure to meet you, but by the way that he took items right as soon as the fight started, I was like, this guy means business. Or I could have been like, hey motherfucker, get down there. You, I, There's a dirty spot on the floor. But what we're going to do is go to our quick bar. We'll take off twin... Actually, no, we should take off the souls of a lost undead. I might need those humanities. And we'll put on charcoal pine resin on our weapon, which should allow us to have, like, some fire damage on our weapon. But I don't expect that this fight is going to go well too well for us. We might die immediately. It all depends on how we deal with these dogs that first come for us. Oh, I got hit, but just get up the stairs. Get up the stairs. If you get up the stairs, you got a chance. One dog dead? If you get two dogs dead, you're you're usually okay. But it all depends. Kill this dog. Come on, man. Dog is dead. Estus up. Okay, now we get ready for the Capra Demon fight. Uh, to be honest with you, it might, it might seem crazy, but the, uh, the hardest part of this fight is already over. Is he coming for me now? So now we're going to kind of exploit him a little bit. This music is not helping me... Uh, you know, maintain my composure right now. Please just fall off the edge, Capra. There we go. Now we do a plunging attack. Does a ton of damage. And now we can, if we wanted to, we can just sort of duel him. But I, I kind of like the idea of just abusing the stairs. So our, our charcoal pine resin has run out already. Come on, asshole. You might think I'm being totally unfair right now. I promise you that this Capra demon fight is unfair. Fall down. Yeah! That did a ton of damage. He's already, like, half dead. This is not doing a good job of demonstrating the true difficulty of this fight, I promise you. I really thought I could do a plunging attack there. No such luck. The thing with Capra is that he has this, like, three-hit attack, and if you don't manage to... Or if you block the first two, usually with the amount of stamina that you have at this level of the game, uh, you won't be able to block the third one. As we might see here. Fall down. There we go. Again, killer damage. I could probably just duel him right now if I wanted to. But, you know, why risk it when instead we could just defeat Capra and then head back to Firelink Shrine and call this video quits. So basically my oh, my overall opinions on Dark Souls. I didn't expect to be having such a casual conversation about this game as Capra Demon was, was coming at me. But, again, this is an exploit that is borderline necessary to defeat this asshole. I think this might be the attack that's super annoying. Uh... But yeah, this is a great game. Dark Souls, easily one of the best games this generation. And you should absolutely... By the way, this guy just becomes a standard enemy a little bit later on. Um, however, uh, there are caveats. If you're going to buy this on the PC, please, for the love of God, buy a, like, like buy a wired Xbox 360 controller with it if you don't already have one. Uh, beyond that, you know, download the resolution fix. You're going to be happy with it, I promise you. Before, I was like, you know, the, the gamepad default resolution is fine. 
I should say gamepad plus default resolution is fine. Uh, however, the uh, resolution fix definitely made it so that I could see myself actually like beating Dark Souls again. And you know, for people who have watched this far in the video, I am indeed intending on doing a, a quick series to talk about the DLC once I actually get there, as well as probably uh, resuming my invasions. It, it all depends because I seem to be having the same problems with summoning and, and invading that I did on the Xbox 360, where basically, you know, you'll try to summon somebody and just like 30 times in a row, it's like summoning failed, summoning failed. Um, but. Definitely, uh, if you if you fulfill the requirements and or are not willing to, or I should say, uh oh, I lived barely. <laughs> uh, if you fulfill the requirements of like owning a gamepad uh, or being willing to buy a gamepad to play this game, I think you're gonna find that Dark Souls is is absolutely worth your time uh, and worth your money. And this PC version seems to be the definitive one simply because of the graphical update and what I presume is gonna be you know at least characteristically Dark Souls-y DLC, if that makes any sense. So we rested that bonfire. We are not looking so hot, but uh, all those enemies have moved away from us. So in any case, I'm going to stop the video right here. Thank you for joining me in this look at Prepare to Die. In short, it's a shoddy port, but it doesn't matter. There are things you can do to make it a good game. Like, make it a masterpiece, basically, again. All you need is a gamepad and the resolution fix. Yeah, it's shitty that From Software did kind of like a bare-bones port that definitely look like they didn't put too much work into it but at least the game is on pc and with a little bit of extra money or a little bit of luck if you already happen to own a wired gamepad you can enjoy this masterpiece that was previously exclusive to console owners and i think that's what's important to keep in perspective at least you have the chance to play the game now even if maybe from software did a shitty job of porting it but as always thank you guys for watching and i will see you next time oh do i have the wave yeah